Hey there, fellas. Mike Yarbrough of Wolf and Iron here. Welcome back to a Truck Talk Thursday episode on the Wolf and Iron podcast. So glad to have you guys here. If you're just tuning in for the first time and you're wondering what Wolf and Iron is all about and what this podcast episode is all about, well, Wolf and Iron helps men heed the high call that's on our lives. It's something that calls us out and says, there's a status quo standard for men, and I need to be more than that. I can't have the family that I want to have. I can't have the career or the business that I want to have. I can't be the man that I want to be and be just like I was yesterday or be like most of the guys that I see around me. I've got to be more than that. I believe this is a call put on the hearts of men by God and that uh, we feel a burden to heed it. And so Wolf and Iron helps men do such a thing as heed that high call through articles and podcasts and community. And so I'm glad you guys are here. And if you are a man and that sounds like it fits you, then you're in the right place. And, uh, and I want you guys to be a part of this thing even more so than just being part of the podcast. Guys, we've got a, a great group of guys over on our Facebook group. We have a free Facebook group called the Wolf and Iron Community, and you can get there by going to wolfandiron.com slash the group, and uh, that'll take you over to our Facebook page or our Facebook group page where you can sign up. And look, we don't let just anybody in. In fact, we turn away more guys than we actually let into the group, and we do that because we want to keep the caliber of men high and the caliber of conversations high over there. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of the guys that are over there and the conversations that I see happening and the way we uh, we help each other over there. So wolfandiron.com slash the group. Now, this is a special Truck Talk Thursday episode, and here on the Truck Talk Thursday episodes, I'm basically just driving along in my truck and uh, and just speaking to you guys about whatever's on my mind. This one's a little bit different, though, because this is going to be all about the anniversary of our fifth year of Wolf and Iron. Now, these anniversary things uh, I put together once a year, obviously, as an anniversary of the beginning, the launch of Wolf and Iron, really just to, well, it's both for myself and it's also for you guys. I know a lot of you guys are following along with the journey just to see where Wolf and Iron's going, how it's growing, that kind of thing. And uh, But it's also for me uh, because I need to just take a moment to just think about where, I, where I've been, where I'm going, uh, what kind of growth is happening, what it's taken to get here, and uh, where I hope to be in the next year. And so these anniversary episodes are beneficial for both of us here. And this was actually supposed to come out in August. So our anniversary for Wolf and Iron is in August. And I hate that I missed it too, because this was such a an important one, being our fifth year is kind of a milestone. And there's been so much happening over the last several months, over the last year, really, with Wolf and Iron and with Rustic and Maine, my other business, um, that uh, that I want to talk to you guys about. So, as you can imagine, and for those of you who've been following along, a lot of this last year has really been focused around the growth of my other business, Rustic and Maine. So, I have another business where we make these amazing wedding rings. It started with me doing this in my garage, and uh, it's literally the American dream kind of thing. I started making some wedding rings out of uh, some neat woods in my garage with the idea of, of kind of growing it into a business. So it did start out like that. It wasn't just a hobby, but uh, it took off really quickly. I, I brought on a couple of guys that I knew and, uh, and you know, we kind of worked out in my garage for a few months and then eventually graduated from there into a, a building where we are now. And we've grown into a, a team of 18 plus people making rings, doing shipping, uh, all kinds of different things, all different roles there. Uh, operations manager, and uh, my wife works alongside me, and she's just a fantastic um, complement to my uh, my lacking skill set in some ways. And uh, that's been a big focus of our year, guys. I mean, it's just been huge. But I haven't taken the gas off of Wolf and Iron, and actually, the success of Rustic has inspired me to do some awesome things with Wolf, and it's also given me the ability to do this full time. So. I'm a, I work for myself full time now. This changed actually last June, so in June of 2016, I uh, came to work for myself full time. And uh, Rustic is doing well enough that it has some uh, some money that I can throw into Wolf and Iron, which I haven't had before. I also don't have to steal time away, kind of from my regular job like I used to before. I'd have to go take my lunch breaks or uh, try to find some time when I'm working at home and I'm caught up on work 
to do podcasts, to do articles and those kinds of things. And so Wolf and Iron is moving and has moved this last year from a a side hustle, kind of a mission project, let's see where it goes type of thing, to really getting some, some legs under it and really focusing on what's the, what's the mission, uh, how do I define what Wolf and Iron is all about, the message, and, uh, and how do I want to monetize this thing. So I didn't really mean for this to all start with M's, but mission, the message, and the monetization has really been the focus of this last year. I feel like a preacher now. And just to kind of give you guys an idea of where Wolf and Iron began and where we are now, the transition is just, it's incredible. There are a lot of things that I know that I really wish that I knew back when I started um, that I know out now. And, and obviously that's the, always the case when you've been in, doing your thing for a while. When I first began Wolf and Iron, I had just started working for, uh, I was still a software developer, and I had just began working for a company called Cardinal Solutions. I actually think they just got... Uh, merged with another company, but it was a great little little company, and uh, we're doing some consulting and stuff like that as as a software developer. And I had finally decided to take this leap into this blogging world, and and Wolf and Iron was going to be where I was going to do that. Now, blogging and and writing in that format is very different than writing a book in, in so many ways. There are things that you think about and you have to be concerned with that, and there actually it's a lot of fun. But it's, it's totally different than writing a book. I mean, with a book, you still do things like you lay it out and you go, you know, and you begin writing the book and you do some research and those kinds of things. But with a blog, and especially when you're first starting and nobody knows about you, it's like this roller coaster of like uh, finding time to do it, but also putting the putting the stuff out there and you know putting your heart and soul behind it, and you know, like ten people read it. You know, it's uh, and that's pretty much where everybody starts, unless you have some following for some other reason. And so that's what I was doing. When Wolf and Iron first began, I would um, take some time away from work. I'd go to a coffee shop or I'd go get some, uh, some lunch somewhere. And I'd sit down with my laptop and I would just really out of a passion, out of just a, this desire to grow as a man and kind of using Wolf and Iron as a catalyst to help me do that, um, I began blogging. And I'd write on whatever subjects came to mind. I had a whole list of things. I still do. And I'd spend maybe... You know, 35, 45 minutes writing, I get about half of the blog of an article done and then come back and, you know, uh, and then finish it up the next time. And I did this for actually several years, guys. We had over 250 some odd blog articles on the site that 99.9% .9 of them I've written. And, uh, you know, when you start out, like I said, you're not getting a whole lot of traffic. You know, your friends and family maybe are reading it. But slowly, you know, slowly but surely, eventually the SEO kind of catches up, and that's one of the things you got to think about. Like, okay, search engine optimization. Uh, how big do my images need to be? What kind of keywords am I supposed to use in my blog? Um, you know, how long does it take before this thing starts to get some traction? When do I monetize this thing in terms of advertisement? Do I even want to do that? Uh, so there's a lot of things that go into the blogging kind of piece that don't, you know, like I said, don't go into writing a book. But uh, as I, after about two and a half years, I kind of began to get some traction, and that was nice, but I also realized that a lot of the, the, the views and the hits and stuff that you get on a blog, while it's nice to see that grow, and it can, you can make some, eventually begin to make some money off of uh, ad revenue, it's really not, uh, it's not conducive to, to the change, right? I mean, I'm not just doing this for my health, guys. I want to I want to see men's lives change. I want to know that what I'm writing and what I'm talking about is really making an impact on men. And what happens, and you guys, we're all part of this, is that when you write a when a blog article is written out there, and it sits out there, and, it, and, and Google kind of uh, finds it and, and ranks it and all that kind of stuff, people will eventually search for things and come across your blog, and so you get a lot of hits that way. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you get a lot of engagement. You might be able to get some email signups and those kinds of things. But the engagement's usually pretty low, meaning people come there, they read, they get their information, and they're gone, you know. And, uh, and a lot of times those hits are just people coming in and going, nope, that's not what I was looking for, and then they leave. So they spend two or three seconds on the site, and then they're gone. And so it's difficult to really know if what you're doing is being effective. So I decided about two and a half years in that I really wanted to focus more on engagement, not on just simply creating content and getting traffic. And uh, this is one of the things that I wish I had known when I started, but I didn't. 
And, uh, and so I began to shift over to making the podcast the main thing. Now, this was a challenge back in the day because I had a full-time job. Um, I had to work my schedule around how do I, you know, podcasting and interviewing people or recording them myself. I could only do that when I was at home, and that was usually maybe one day a week. And so it was sporadic at the beginning. But as time went on, and especially as I began to work for myself in this last year, um, I began to really put more focus around that and see the podcast grow has been awesome because, guys, it's different. When, when the podcast is growing, it means guys are tuning in. Guys are listening, and, uh, and they're, they're hearing, you're hearing this, right? You're listening to this. And this is different than, than reading an article. And I think it's much more effective. And, you know, there's a place for articles, and there's a place for getting that kind of traffic. There's actually a lot of benefits we're, we're seeing from doing that, and I'll talk about that in a second. But the um, but podcasts and videos, if you really want people to be engaged with you and to know you as a person, um, that's that's the, rec- the way to go, guys. So, And that's really where we've been kind of shoring things up this last year. And I say we because I've put together a team finally for Wolf and Iron. Um, a couple of things that we've done is uh, the first thing we did was we actually began the Wolf and Iron community, the free Facebook group that I mentioned at the beginning of this. And just seeing the, the conversations there, guys, seeing the men um, just kind of put it all out there. You know, this is what's going on with my family. This is what's going on with my kids. Can you pray for me because of this? How do I solve this? And not only that, but our wins as well, you know, celebratory things. Those kind of things, guys, have really just um, just inspired me tremendously as to where I want Wolf and Iron to go, what I want Wolf and Iron to be. Uh, it's, it's helped me very much to understand what are the needs of men. Uh, how do I want to make an impact and how do I, how do I continue to engage the guys that are out there that, um, that need some manliness in their life, right? And, uh, and not only that, but we also get feedback from when you guys are interacting much more than we ever did when we were just a blog. So I know we're on the right track. And so we launched the Wolf and Iron community. That's grown to about 2,500 guys, uh, really just since last October. So really, well, I guess it's been about a year then. And like I told you at the beginning, we don't let everybody in. And we don't try to do gimmicky things to get guys to join. I really want, you know, it's going to be a slow growth process because of this, but I really want the best guys there. And that's what we're seeing. Um, the other thing is that we made a decision to launch something called the Foundry. Now, this hasn't launched yet. It'll be sometime next year, 2019. But the Foundry will basically take some of the things, the good things that are happening in our free Facebook group and just explode that into a paid membership site where there are videos and other things, um, online community uh, events, meetups, different things like that for the guys that, that are really, really want to take this stuff seriously, that want to be... Um, uh, the best men that they can be and just really just be a part of a community of men that are just doing excellently heeding the high call in their lives and uh, you can find out more details about the foundry by going to wolfandiron.com slash the foundry there's also a it may have been a truck talk thursday episode but there's a um there's another episode podcast episode where i talk all about the foundry what it's about uh, and those kinds of things i believe the timeline is getting pushed out we were hoping to launch in january but that seems to be uh, getting pushed out mainly because January is actually one of our busiest seasons for rustic. And, um, and so anyhow, more to come on the foundry, but just so you guys know, we've been, I have some direction as far as where I want Wolf and Iron to go. The other thing that I really wanted to do this year is, um, is have a store launched to really get some legs under it, to start getting some sales and to really introduce Wolf and Iron as a brand. And this was, this wasn't actually a, a thing that we just came up with. And in fact, this is something that I thought about in the early days of Wolf and Iron. However, there is an investment there that, that needs to be had. And so we just didn't have the opportunity to do that. Um, but as far as a brand goes, you know, we don't, we don't want it to be like Wolf and Iron has this podcast and there's some shirts that we also sell. We really want the brand to be front and center. And the reason for that is because a lot of guys will come in through the brand, or actually a lot of ladies will actually come in through the brand buying gifts for their guys, and uh, and then be introduced to Wolf and Iron. And so it's, it's another way for people who don't podcast, uh, who may, maybe aren't you know, big on uh, reading blogs and that kind of stuff, 
to find out about Wolf and Iron, but also because I just had this artistic bent and I like to do cool stuff and make shirts and do designs and things like that. And so I wanted to have an outlet for that. So the, the store kicked off last November and, uh, so it's been almost a year now and we finally have it fleshed out with a good number of t-shirts, some prints and, uh, beard oils. We're going to be really pushing the beard oils hard this, uh, this season for Christmas. And, um, so I'm really excited about that. It's going to be really the first revenue avenue that, um, that Wolf and Iron has had a consistent revenue basis. So we're excited about where that's going. Uh, along with that, we've also been focusing on getting the podcast consistent so that, uh, there are consistent episodes coming out at least one episode a week, but ideally two episodes a week. And as part of that, we've put this team together. So we've got on, on the team, we've got someone named Stephanie and she does our shipping and stuff like that for the Wolf and Iron pot products. So if you order some beard oil, you order a t-shirt, whatever it happens to be, there's a really, really good chance that Stephanie's shipping those things out. We've also got Cody Lanham on as uh, our podcast producer. Cody's just a tremendous guy. If you, uh, just, I really want you guys to, to learn more about Cody as time goes on. We've got some cool stuff lined up for November for this year and some other things going on, but, um, he's just a fantastic guy. He's, he's the absolute man that you want to have in your corner when it comes to building something like this. And um, so more to come on Cody and his his role. But we've got Cody as the producer. He's lining up a lot of great interviews and stuff like that for the podcast. Gabe uh, is a guy who does our editing for the podcast. And we've also got Jordan who does our show notes and, uh, and stuff like that and, and helps out with the emails and things of that nature. So the reason that we have this team put together is because in order for me to be able to launch the foundry or to think about next phase types of things, I've got to take some existing things off my plate. And this is something that I've talked about in previous episodes is that you've got to modularize the things that you do as a business owner and, uh, and systematize those things so that they can become roles and functions that other people can do. And unlike rustic where rustic basically was profitable from day one, uh, wolf and iron is still an investment. And so, as the store grows and as we begin a brand, and bef since we're not going to be launching the foundry, it looks like uh, at the beginning of 2019, might be more of like mid-2019, we'll have to see. But as we kind of extend the investment period, um, that means that I'm investing in this team. And uh, and that's no knock on them. And it's just, guys, I just want you guys to understand, I believe in this. I really believe in this. Um, there are some avenues and some things that I could do that could bring in some money, maybe through advertising on the podcast, um, and things of that nature. I don't want to cheapen what Wolf and Iron's about. And so if I do decide to do any kind of ads on the podcast, you can uh, be very sure that it's going to be with reputable brands that I think you guys would actually be interested in, not just like, hey, here's some tax software or whatever the case is, you know. Um, so it's going to be stuff that you guys would appreciate. Uh, but at the same time, I may just decide to pitch our own store and have you guys go there. We'll see. But at the same time, I don't want to, I don't want to cheapen the brand. I don't want to cheap water down what Wolf and Iron's about. I'm okay with it being a mission, um, until we get the, the revenue that we're looking for. And I'm honestly, I'm not too worried about that. Um, I'm excited about where things are. Now, I always like to talk about the numbers and, uh, usually I have, I'm doing this, I'm usually recording this podcast or there's a website, you know, that goes along with this and I'll introduce you guys to all the numbers and the stats and how Wolf and Iron's grown over the years. I don't have all the numbers in front of me because I'm in my truck and uh, that'd be dangerous for me to look that up, but I do have most of the numbers off of the top of my head and it's kind of interesting. This year has been more of a shift of where we're growing rather than seeing consistent growth in a particular area. So Usually, in the last several years, I've been looking uh, at mostly the website traffic. What kind of hits are we getting on the website? Um, and that kind of stuff and seeing that grow. But like I said, we're really shifting over to the podcast. And some cool stuff has happened, guys. So, in the last several years, the podcast has been pretty, or the, uh, the website traffic has been pretty consistent. Those 250 articles that we wrote, uh, or that I wrote a few years back, have, um, have generated about 20,000 or so hits a month. Um, and then sp special months like November and December, we've got some, um, some Christmas, uh, some Christmas articles out there. We've got a, 
uh, how to smoke a, a turkey on your Weber grill article out there. So those things do well in, in around you know November, Thanksgiving, and Christmas time frames. But uh, so we get a lot more traffic actually during those those times, which is kind of cool. And I, as I said before, I was going to tell you why writing those articles is going to be such a big benefit from us, for us. So I mentioned that we launched the store, and um, we get about twenty thousand or so hits a month just from the blog. But the store was, for the most part, under its own URL. It was actually store.wolfandiron.com instead of everything being under wolfandiron.com. Well, the last month or so, I think it was about the last month, I moved um, everything un- into wolfandiron.com. So now if you go to wolfandiron.com, you, you basically land at the store page, but we've got the blog there as well. The podcast is there. And so we want the brand and the mission to be front and center, kind of co-equals, and um, and so that's what we've done. Well, so that blog traffic that we were getting, uh, much of that is now coming over to our store, and so we're getting we've gone from getting in the store, you know, like literally twenty hits a day, organic traffic because we weren't doing any ads at the time, you know, twenty twenty five hits a day of organic traffic in the store to now getting you know three four hundred hits a day in the store, and the. Uh, and that's great. So now we're capturing email addresses and people are getting introduced to Wolf and Iron as a brand, uh, not just uh, as a mission. Um, so really, really glad that we made the investment in, in those articles. Guys, just if you're out there and you're building something kind of like this, um, just be aware. You know, podcasts are great for reaching people, for engagement. They're not necessarily great for creating traffic to your site. Um, that's just not where their strength is. In order to do that, you've still got to have, you can have like, let's say for every episode we release, we'll have on a blog post, the player for that episode. So you'll be able to listen to it. You may be listening to this actually on the website, but then we'll also on that uh, page, we'll have the show notes. Now they've been really limited. They've been really light show notes in the past, but we're actually going to be fleshing those out so that the show notes are more involved and more detailed. They have a lot more keyword density than they have in the past. And so that's going to help more with SEO. But guys, nothing beats an article. Having an article out there where you've got a video, you've got a step-by-step tutorial with pictures, guys, that will rank you high in Google. It doesn't matter how obscure you are. Um, that's, there's just a great formula there to follow. Have a video in your article, uh, step-by-step uh, processes with pictures, and uh, and great keyword density about whatever the subject is, and uh, and you'll be doing fine. So. Anyhow, so we're starting to get some traffic there, and as Christmas rolls around, we'll start to get a lot more traffic to the uh, to the to the store. So we're excited about that. But the the website hits have stayed pretty much the same over the last few years, about twenty thousand or so views um, per month, and that's not a lot actually. I mean, in in the web web traffic world, the blogging space, if you're not doing at least a hundred thousand views a month, you're really not doing a whole lot, and there's really no no reason to. Put any kind of ads on your on your site. Um, you're gonna get, I mean, you know, you're gonna get maybe 50 bucks a month uh, from organic traffic uh, ads and maybe whatever you know Google pays out. So it's it's really just not worth that unless you have a very very you know niche type of topic, which we we don't. We're, we're men talking about being men, so that's not as niche as like uh, people who grow succulents that have you know cats or something like that. <clears throat> so. But the cool thing is, so 20,000 hits on the, on the website, organic traffic, like I said, we're not really sending anybody there through ads or anything like that. We actually just surpassed 20,000 downloads on the podcast every month uh, in October. And um, actually, no, this is October, in September. So, guys, that's a tremendous milestone for us that the same number of people who visit 250-some-odd articles out there uh, are the same is the same as the number of people who download the the podcast for us. That's really cool, guys, because we know that the podcast just has tremendous engagement, and uh, and you guys are listening to this. You get, you love it. You, you give us plenty of feedback on this, and uh, and so we're just happy to connect with you guys um, as well as we can. So that's really been where growth has been, and uh, and where we're excited to see growth in the future is here on the podcast. We're also going to be investing in video quite heavily this next year. So if you're not already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you do that. And you can head over to wolfandiron.com slash YouTube, or you can go to youtube.com slash wolfandiron, and that'll take you to our YouTube page. And we're going to be doing a lot more there 
uh, as well. Um, so just stay tuned to that. And um, I think that's about it. So a lot of cool stuff happening, guys. I think the, I just feel like for the first time, the framework is right. Uh, the message is good. I'm getting clarity on what it is I'm trying to, what Wolf and Iron is about. When we talk about things like be a better man and stuff like that, it's rather nebulous. And so um, <laughs> I just got to work and uh, one of my coworkers is here. She's checking on how, how well either I did parking or she did parking. I don't know. But um, when we talk about being a man, that's sort of a broad topic, right? And boiling that down to what is a man, what's that supposed to be, that's taken a while. You guys may have heard me say, and you probably see it in the tagline sometimes on the emails, feed the wolf, be the iron. You know, that wasn't something that even came to me until probably three years into this. And I, you know, I had to think, what does that mean? Feed the wolf, be the iron. And so we've got some previous podcasts on that. Uh, the high call. What does it mean to, to, to live this high call out? What does it feel like to have the high call in your life? So those kinds of things, guys, I feel like have just become much more clear over the, uh, over this last year. And, um, and my confidence in the success of Wolf and Iron long term and what the long term vision is for Wolf and Iron, um, is just has, has never been higher. Really hasn't. So look, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you tuning in to these podcast episodes. Uh, I'm thankful for those of you who have been listening and or, or viewing, have been part of this for the last five years. That's a long time hanging in there with me. And, uh, and I know you've grown. I've grown over the years. And I look forward to another five with you guys. Talk to you later.